gon' pay off in the end. Just make sure you get in. It's your spirit war I'm with your flesh. Trying to get the best of you. It's all in your head and in your mind. Can't let it mess with you. Child of tribulation, that's every day. That's what we go through. Are you gon' face it? Stand up like a man. Tell me what you gon' do. No more complaining. Gotta walk blameless. Gotta be humble. You might not get famous. We go through change. We go through all right, shalom, 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 Israel, most high in Christ, bless, most high in Christ, bless. And we back with another IUIC Memphis in the classroom. Hey, I'm Officer Hawkins. <laughs> I'm Officer Hawkins. So, Soldier Adria. Hey, so tonight, hey, we're going to be going into die first love, right? A lot of us come into this truth, and we get afflicted, or we go through certain things, or we start to fall off, or we start to fade away. If we forget that first love, we forget what brought us here from the beginning. All right? Hey, so play me that first video that I sent y'all earlier today. So those are some of the, uh, as you can see, the top two religions was Christianity, Islam. And so that, that uh, chart there was showing the projections of, of where these different religions will be in the near future. A lot of us come up out of those different religions. A lot of us was in the midst of that Christianity. A lot of brothers and sisters was in the midst of Islam. A lot of brothers was in the midst of some of those different uh, religions that they had on that chart. And a lot of us came up out of that religion. How? Uh, give me the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3. Because a lot of us had questions, right, when we was in those churches or whatever the case may be, right? Some just didn't sit right in the church. Some didn't sit right with, uh, in Islam or whatever the case may be. It seemed like a lot of us, the inquiring mind, we wanted to know more. And a lot of the pastors and the preachers and things like that could never expound upon the scriptures to give us the understanding that we was looking for. But read that. It's the book of Revelation, chapter three, 1 and verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, uh -huh. and they that hear the words of this prophecy. The Bible said, blessed is he that readeth, right? Blessed is he that readeth, because when we was in those, in the midst of those different religions or whatever, a lot of us, we, we started to read. Like the scripture said, blessed is he that readeth. Why read it again? Bless is he that readeth, Read. and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Then we started to hear some of the words of this prophecy, like we read in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, where it talks about slave ships, where it talks about our children being taken away from us, where it talks about uh, other uh, nations coming in and sleeping with our wives. Those things was like a light bulb for me when I heard that. It just popped on like, wait a minute, that's talking about us, right? So that was that inquiring mind that I had. I wanted to know more. And when I was reading the scriptures, you read in the scriptures further into Deuteronomy 28, and you ask the pastors, like, what does this mean? Is that talking about our people or is it talking about something else? And a lot of them still can't give the answer. Read, read it again. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3. Read. Blessed is he that readeth, uh -huh. and they that hear the words of this prophecy, read. and keep those things which are written therein. And keep those things which are written therein. So, some of those things that was written therein. Give me Job chapter 14. We'll start there. Job chapter 14 and start at verse. Let me get there. Which verse 9? Read that. It's the book of Job chapter 14 and verse 9. Read. Yet through the scent of water. St start up, start up, start up. Verse 7. Verse 7. Read. For there is a hope of a tree. Uh huh. If it be cut down. So God said it's like there's still a hope of the tree if it be cut down. Why? Because even though you cut it, that tree can grow again. Read. That it will sprout again. Read. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Come on. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth. Read. And the stalk thereof die in the ground. Read on. Yet through the scent of water. Through the what? It, through the scent of water. The Bible says through the scent of that water, right? 
that water is that word that the scriptures speak about in uh what is that ephesians 5 and 26 that's the scent of that water right that scent of the water was given was um that water was given to us in these dry places like america right a lot of these areas where our people were took on, on those slave ships in these dry places right read it again Yet through the scent of water, uh -huh. it, it will bud. Through that scent of water, it started to bud. We started to blossom. And we started to grow into that noble plant where God, uh, where God created us to be. That noble plant, that plant that stands out above everything else, above all of the other nations. God created us to be noble. So he allowed that water to come, that scent of water to wake us up again, right? Read it one more time. Yet through the scent of water. It will bud uh -huh. and bring forth bows like a plant. So that scent of water, brothers going out there teaching on the streets, right? Waking up the tribes of Jacob. Uh, the the uh, videos, right? A lot of us came in off of watching videos. That's that scent of that water that was being sprinkled out there in these dry places that was waking a lot of us up. Got a lot of us that's in here today, right? Brothers going out on the streets teaching because a lot of us didn't know who we were back then. A lot of us didn't know. We thought that we was African Americans, uh, we was black, or like we we thought that we was these things, right? We wanted to assimilate into their society and be and be like the other nations, right? But through the scent of this water, through this word, through the Lord putting the Spirit on me and to go out and teach this word, a lot of us start to wake up and come back, just like Paul did. Hey, give me uh, let's go to First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three, start at verse. Start at verse 6. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, and verse 6. Read. I have planted, uh -huh. Apollo watered. Paul said, I came and planted the word, and then Apollos came behind me and watered it, right? Watered it to make sure that it was still growing. Read again. I have planted, Apollo watered, uh -huh. but God gave the increase. But God gave the increase, right? Read on. So then, neither is he that planted uh -huh. anything. It is he that watereth, right. but God that giveth the increase. So Paul came and planted, right? He came and planted the word, right? A lot of us may have heard that word on the streets, right? We we heard it, and we heard something that may have caught our attention, but we still walk past it, right? And then you turn on the um the internet, and you're scrolling through YouTube or whatever, and you see it again. So now, you, now you're being watered with that word some more. All right, and then the Lord give the increase to finally you. Hey, you want to start to change your life, and now you want to come in and, and start to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Now, hey, you realize that Christianity ain't the way to go, right? Now you want to be cleaned up with the Word of God, as the Scriptures speak about, right? Give me uh, Psalms. Let's go to Psalms fifty-one. Psalms chapter fifty-one and verse fifty-one. Psalms chapter fifty-one and verse ten. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 10. Read. Creating me a clean heart. King David said, creating me a clean heart, Lord, like a lot of us want when we're searching for this truth, right? We just we just want the answers, right? We want to be clean. We want that clean heart. We, we, hey, we all want to get the kingdom of heaven, right? Read. Oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. Read. Cast me not away from thy presence uh -huh. and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Read verse 13. Verse 13, then will I teach transgressors thy ways. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways when I come in and I start to clean myself up. I start to keep the law, statutes, and commandments and, and learn and learn the things that I need to do to get myself right, right? Making sure that my house is in order. Making sure I got my wife in order and the children also. Making sure, making sure that I'm moving in the spirit of the Lord. And once I got these things down packed, now I'm ready to go out there on the streets and teach somebody. You got to have your life together, right? You can't teach somebody. You, how can you go out there and teach someone when you yourself is broken? So that's what these scriptures do. It comes in, it cleans us up, and get us prepared, hey, and show us the way that we must walk in, like the scriptures say. Read it again. Verse 13, then will I teach transgressors thy way. Then we will go out there and teach transgressors thy way. Therefore, now you become that new man and now you're ready, right? You done changed. Now you're growing your beard, right? Now you, uh, 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 you're not eating pork no more, right? You're doing the things what the Bible said. Do give me the, give me, uh, first Samuel 10 and 6. Book of first Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6. Read. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 10, and verse 6. Read on. And the Spirit of the Lord 
will come upon thee. The spirit of the Lord has come upon you now, right, Breed? And thou shalt prophesy with them. Now you're ready to go out and prophesy unto the people, right? Prophesy and show these people, show the world, show our brothers and sisters these good things that's in the Bible that pertains to them, Read. And shall be turned into another man. So this word will turn you into the, another man, right? You see brothers that come in that was game bangers. Now brothers out there go on the streets going hard for the Lord. Right, you see, brothers, they came in. Brothers was whoremongers, and they came in and got cleaned up by the word of the God. By the word of God, now they're going out there, going hard for the Lord. Right, brothers, that came in hey, from all walks of life. Right, this word cleaned them up and it changed them, and they started to and they started to go out there and go hard for the Lord. Brothers understood the mission. Brothers understood these things. Brothers understood this. Give me Psalms, Book of Psalms, chapter nineteen and verse two. Psalm chapter 19 and uh, start at verse 2. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 2. We'll start at verse 1. Verse 1. Read. The heavens declare the glory of God. Read. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Come on. Day unto day utter speech. He said what? Day unto day utter speech. Read. And night unto night showeth knowledge. God said day unto day uttereth his speech. Right? When brothers come into this truth and they learn this truth and we hit the streets, a lot of us, we understand this, that we got to go out there on the streets and teach this word constant. It's a constant thing. That's why you see we have things like um, the 365. Brothers going to camp 150 days out of the year. Brothers going to camp 60 days, doing 30 days of camp. Right? Because we got to, because we understood the mission. A lot of us came in and we understood this. Read it again. Day unto day, utter of speech. The Bible said day unto day, utter it speech. Right, this work don't stop. Right, somebody's gonna be out there teaching the Bible. A lot of us understood that. Read. And night unto night, show of knowledge. Come on. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So there's no speech or nor language where their voice is not heard because you got brothers all in uh in in these different areas throughout the world bringing out the word of God in these various languages that we speak. A lot of them speak the uh the um. Give me some languages. Different languages, Spanish, Dutch, all of these French. things. They speak in French. They're bringing out the word of God in all these different languages. We understood that, right? Brothers understood that, right? Give me Second Chronicles chapter 17 and verse 9. Second Chronicles chapter 17 and give me verse 9. It's the book of Second Chronicles chapter 17 and verse 9. Come on. And they taught in Judah. And had the book of the law of the Lord with them. Read it again. And they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. So brothers understood that we, we when we go out and teach, right, we understood to go out and teach our people the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Right? We're doing the same thing that our forefather was doing. Going throughout the different cities or going throughout the different countries with the book, teaching the laws, statutes, and commandments to our people. Read it again. This is the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 17 and verse 9. Read. And they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. Read. And went about throughout all the cities of Judah. Went about where? Uh, throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. So we went about all the days. Here they, our forefathers went about all the cities of Judah and taught the people. Same thing that we're doing today. Going throughout the cities, going throughout the various areas through Memphis. Then we spread out and go out to Jonesboro, Arkansas. Then we spread out and we're going up into Jackson, Tennessee. Thus far, you got brothers spreading out all throughout the United States, and then we're taking over the world, right? We understood those things, right? So when we come into these, we come into this thing, we start to change. We start to change our ways, like brothers grow their beards, hey, brothers stop uh, um, uh, the whoremongering spirits or whatever the case may be, and we become that new man. And when you become that new man, you start to be able to speak clear because now you start to understand the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Give me Job. Go back to Job 33. Job chapter 33 and verse 3. Job 33. Man, where is it? Go ahead and read it when you get it. It's the book of Job chapter 33 and verse 3. Read. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart. Read it again. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart. Come on. And my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. So when you start to understand and you start to apply these things, right, your thought process will start to be right. You will start to you'll get understanding of the scriptures, and it will allow you to be able to start to speak clearly, 
right? You ever notice when brothers come in and they have brothers be stuttering, all right? Stumbling over their words or whatever the case may be. But when they get out there and teach and speak the words of God, you don't hear no stuttering, right? Everything is coming out clear as crystal, right? Read it again. It's the book of Job, chapter 33 and verse 3. Read. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart. Read. And my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. Read it again, my bad. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, uh -huh. and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. Your lips will utter the knowledge of this Bible clearly, because now you're starting to apply the law, statutes, and commandments, and now the Spirit is moving through you and working with you, right? So, give me Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs 26. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20, and start at verse 6. Because everybody will say that they're faithful, right, until those trials start to come, right? Read that. Proverbs, what did I say get? 26. 20 and verse, yeah, start at verse 6. 20 and 6. Yes, sir. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 6. Most men will, will proclaim everyone his own goodness, uh -huh. but a faithful man who can find. Everybody will say that they right, right? But, uh, but, but who is faithful, right? Who is that faithful man that's going to stay the course? Who is that faithful man that's not going to uh, deviate from the law, statutes, and commandments of God, right? One that meditates in the laws of God. That's that faithful man. And we stop meditating on the laws of God, then we start to stray away like stray dogs do or whatever. Read it again. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Read. But a faithful man who can find. Uh-huh. The just man walketh in his integrity. Read. His children are blessed after him. His children are blessed after him. So everybody will say, but who is that faithful man, right? So read, read that again. A just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Read. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. So he scattered away all evil with his eyes. So let's go into that. Let's see what those eyes are talking about. Give me Ephesians. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse, start at verse 18. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Did what? Being enlightened. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. What? Being enlightened through what? Read. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling uh -huh. and what the riches of the glory of his in inheritance in the saints. So the Bible says the eyes of your understanding shall be enlightened. How? How so? By meditating on the law, statutes, and commandments of God. That's how you, the, your eyes are going to be enlightened. That's why I say when the king sat upon his throne, he, what did it say? Read it again. Go back to the Proverbs. Hold it and then go back to Proverbs. Proverbs, what is it? It's Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 8. Read Proverbs 28 again real quick. The book of Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 8. Read. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment Read. scattereth away all evil with his eyes. With his what? With his, with his eyes. With his eyes. His eyes has been enlightened, right, by keeping by meditating on the law, statutes, and commandments of God, right? Therefore, you're going to have the understanding, right, or that spirit of discernment, right, to, to, to know when somebody's evil, that evil Negro that's amongst you, or the evil sister that's amongst you, right? Read that uh, Ephesians 1 and 18 again. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 18. Come on. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, uh -huh. that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. So a lot of us came in, right, and our eyes was enlightened. We started to learn some of the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. We started to apply those things, and we started to stand strong for the Lord, right? But a lot of times, a lot of that get cloudy, right? It starts to get cloudy. Affliction starts to come, or, or whatever the case may be. Or you're not making enough money on your job, or whatever the case may be. Those distractions are starting to hit. Now you're starting to, to pull away little by little, right? You ain't studying no more. Now you're not meditating in the law, statutes, and commandments no more. Give me 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6 and 7. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 35, my bad. 1 Corinthians 6 and 7, verse started 35. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, and verse 45, 35. 35. 35, yes, sir. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you. Come on. But for that which is comely, and that ye may obtain upon the Lord without, without distraction. Read it again. And this I speak for your own profit. This I speak for, this is for your own profit, right? This is for your own well-doing. Read. 
Not that I may cast a snare upon you. Come on. But for that which is comely, and that ye may attain upon the Lord without distraction. Uh, to attain upon the Lord without distractions. So a lot of us become distracted by the things that's in the world, right? A lot of brothers get distracted with, they battle with porn. Or a lot of brothers get distracted with um, these different things with women and all of that. A lot of brothers get distracted with the lust of money or cars or whatever the case may be. A lot of brothers get distracted and caught up. Uh, they, 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 want this, they want this big paying job, and they get caught up in these things, and they forget to attend unto the Lord, right? So play me video number two. This is some of the distractions that brothers get caught up in. It is what it is. And you'll see this type of woman on your job. You'll see this type of woman uh, in the grocery store. You'll see this type of woman. This woman is everywhere. Because why? Because Satan going to put your lust right in front of you. Right? He's going to put those things that we battle, those things that we lust after right in front of you. Right? But it's on us. We got we to gotta filter out those things with the word of God. All right? Go ahead and play it. Distract them. Oh, who? What are you doing? Is that your wife doing it? You see how easily the brother was distracted. He got a whole wife sitting over there, right? And, and, and the white woman come up there and jump up and down or whatever, and he looking at the body parts upon her, and he get easily distracted. Forgot about his whole wife that was over there uh, uh, in the back, right? Just like brothers do today. Brother, see this type of sister in the store. Brother, see this type of sister on the job. Brother might be walk. Hey, brother might be exercising or whatever the case may be. And this same type of sister uh, walk past you, and brothers get distracted by. It. And brothers, a lot of brothers take that bait, and a lot of brothers fall for it. Read that again. Sir. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, and verse 35. Come on. And this I speak for your own profit. Read. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, Come on. but for that which is coming. And that ye may attain upon the Lord without distraction. I must attain upon the Lord without distractions, right? We got to we gotta um, attend unto the Lord and stop letting these things distract us. Because a lot of social media distract us. A lot of, hey, because I know even me. I can, rem I can, I can, you can be on social media and before you look up, you've been on it for a whole hour. Right? And that's, a, that's a whole hour that you could have been studying the scriptures. A lot of times we got to learn, we got to learn how to catch ourselves and and, and, and digress for those things and put those things to rest and focus on the things at hand, the mission of God. Put away the, hey, sometimes it's good to put the phone down and put, put Facebook away for a minute. TikTok and, and what's all this other stuff? The Instagrams and all those things right there that our people love so much. Because it keep us so occupied to the point where it keep us distracted from the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Now, brothers be showing up late for camp, brother, brother. Why you late? Man, brother was up all night on Facebook. On Instagram, strolling through Facebook and Instagram, right? Brothers could have been preparing and getting themselves ready for war the next day. But brothers on, hey, brothers got their face in Facebook and Instagram and all that. Read it again. It's the book of First Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 35. Come on. And this I speak for your own profit. Read. Not that I may cast a snare upon you. Read. But for that which is coming, and that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. And without all distractions. Because not only brothers get distracted with that. Brothers get distracted with other things, the other a lot of these worldly things also. All right, play the next video. Play the next one. I think this video number three. Play it when you get it. Hey, because not only brothers be distracted by those women, right? That brother was way off, right? That brother was way off, and wife was in the background. You see how she was looking at him at the end, like I'm gonna get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> hey, he forgot all about his wife when he saw the white woman. All right? But go ahead, play. You're getting distracted again. You got dreams to chase, not people to impress. Wake up. A lot of those dreams and things like that that people be chasing, right? Those things keep our people uh, distracted, believe it or not. Because a lot of people want a lot of people want to live that American dream. A lot of brothers come in, hey, we st we we repenting, and we're trying to go strong, we're trying to go, we going hard for the Lord, or whatever the case may be. But in the back of your mind, in the back of your subconscious, or whatever the case may be, hey, I want that big house, right? I want to drive that nice car, right? I want to, I want to, I want to make money like such and such, right? Now, brothers starting to compare themselves to other brothers, 
right? Your situation may not be just, your situation might not be like this other brother, right? This brother probably went to school four or five years to, to, uh, to be able to get what he got, and you didn't. And so brothers want to, a brother start to, he start, that stuff start to overcome them, and it starts to become them, and now they're chasing that dream, and, it, and, it, and eventually it, it distracts them and take them away from the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Those very things that our people lust after, those nice houses or those cars or whatever the case may be. Listen to what God said about those things. Give me Second Peter. Give me Second Peter chapter 3. Start at verse 9. It's the book of Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Read. As some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us word. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, right? The Lord giving us time. He wants us to get right, right? He want he wants us all to get right, but we know everybody's not gonna be right, read. Not willing that any should perish. He don't want none of us to perish, read. But that all should come to repentance. God said he want all to come to repentance. But you know, our people will stiff necked, hard headed people, read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He said, the Bible said that the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night when you caught up in the midst of those distractions that you caught up in. Right? Read it again. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He said, the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night when you're just like that brother and entertaining that sister, uh, entertaining that Edomite woman that uh, showing off her breast to him. Or these brothers and sisters that are starting to entertain the thoughts of starting to chase the money and let the money start to pull them away slowly from this truth. God said that he gonna, you're going to get caught like a thief in the night. Read. In the which the heavens shall pass away. In which the heavens, all of these things that our people chasing, right? All these things going to pass away. What I mean, it's going to pass away. When that, hey, when that World War Three pop off and them bombs drop, those things that we lust after, that nice house that we want to go pay a half a million dollars for, or that car that we want to go out there and drop eighty, ninety thousand dollars for. God said all those things going to pass away and be burned up. Read. And the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. With a what? With a great noise. With a great noise. Read. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Uh-huh. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. All those things that you're lusting after, all those cars and them houses and all these things, like the money or whatever the case may be, God said all those things going to be burned up, right? All those things that, I, that you're chasing, he said they're going to be burned up anyway, right? Give me uh, Sirach. Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 40 and verse 13. Sirach 40 and 13. Read it when you get it. Go ahead. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 40 and verse 13. Read. The goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river. He said what? The goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river. He said the goods of the unjust, right? Those that live in ungodly, right? He said those things are going to be dried up like a river, right? Those things are going to be no more. Read. And shall vanish with noise. And shall vanish with what? With noise. He said, and it's going to vanish away with great noise. Read. Like a great thunder. Like a great thunder. That boom when it hit. Right? What does that? Thermonuclear destruction. Right? When no missiles drop, is all she wrote. All that stuff that you lust after and love so much is going to be over with. Right? That car that you spent all that, that you, that you went and worked this job for on the Sabbath to pay that car note or to pay that big house note you got. Right? God said all those things are going to be burned up, right? That nuclear fire, right? Give me Isaiah. Give me Isaiah 54 and 16. This is that nuclear destruction. Isaiah chapter 54, verse six, uh, 16. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, and verse 16. Come on. Behold, I have created the smith that blow up the coals in the fire. He said what? I created the smith that blow up the coals in the fire. He said that he created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. Read it again, my bad. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, uh -huh. and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. He said, Behold, I have created the smith, right? That smith is a scientist or whatever, one that um, make weapons or whatever the case may be. Read it again. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, Marie. and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. They bring forth the instruments of the work of God. Come on. And I have created the waster. He, said he, he created what? The waster Read. to destroy. God said, I have created the waster to destroy. So those things that we love so much, those nice cars, those nice houses, hey, even that job that you go to, right? God said that I have created the waster. And sooner or later, it's going to drop and it's going to destroy all of those things. 
So we must come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Give me Revelations. Give me Revelations chapter 10. Because this was a lot of us when we came into this truth. All right? Or when we learned of this truth. Give me Revelations chapter 10. Read me verse 9. There's the book of Revelation, chapter 10 and verse 9. Read. And I went unto the angel. Read. And said, and said unto him, give me the little book. Matter of fact, give me, give me, start at, give me Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel, start at 2 and 9. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 2 and verse 9. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2 and verse 9. Come on. And when I looked, behold, and hand was sent unto me, and lo, a rule of a book he said was a, therein. He said a roll of a book. Was there in a roll, right? So, what did he do with that roll? Uh, started uh, next chapter, started one, chapter three, and verse one. Read, moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. He said, Son of man, eat that that thou findest, right? Eat that roll or learn of it, right? Read, eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. Eat this roll and go speak to the house of Israel. When you learn of it, then I need you to go and speak to the house of Israel, right? Read. So I opened my mouth, Read. and he calls me to eat that roll. He calls him to learn of the scriptures, right? Read. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat. He said, cause thy belly to eat. Read on. And fill thy bowels with this roll Read. that I give thee. Come on. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey. So you learned it, right? And it was in your mouth as honey, right? You learned. You learned things like I'm an Israelite, right? Hey, I'm God's chosen people, right? That's that honey. Right, that we learned about. Hey, I'm hey, hey, I'm somebody, right? I'm just not no regular, I'm not no regular old Joe. Right? I learned of it, right? Give me uh hold it, go to Psalms 118 and 103. Let's get the honey. Psalms 118 and verse 103. Psalms 118 and verse, what I say? 103. Is that it? 119. 119, 103, my bad. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and 103. Read. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. It's, read it again. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Said, How sweet are thy words to my taste. But hey, I learned that I'm an Israelite, right? I learned that I'm God's chosen people. Those things were sweet to my taste, right? Now I'm ready to come in, like I said earlier. Now we're ready to come in and we're ready to learn and we want to be that changed man. And we're ready to go out there and, and we 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 on fire for the Lord. Now we're ready to just go do everything for the Lord, right? It was sweet in our mouth. Read. Yay, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Uh-huh, read. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. So through the precepts, we started to get understanding of this Bible. Read. Therefore, I hate every false then way. Then we started to hate every false way, right? We started to hate those things. But go back to that. Go back to um go back to that Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter three and verse three. Read. And he said unto me, Come on. Son of man, cause thy belly to eat. Read. And fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Fill thy bowels with this roll, right? Learn of this Bible, right? And a lot of us that will be came in and did and learned of this Bible. Read. Then did I eat it, and it was my in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Read. And he said unto me, Son of man, go. Get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. So he said it was in his mouth as sweetness, right? What's the opposite of sweetness? That bitterness came, though. That bitterness came, we started, we were starting applying the law, statutes, and commandments of God, and then we started to get hit with these distractions. Hey, we started to, uh, we want to dibble back into our old ways or whatever the case may be. But now we're going back, now, they, now you're going into that bitterness, right? Give me Sirach 21. Sirach 21, verse 12. The book of Sirach, chapter 21 and verse 12. Oh, no He that is not wise will not be taught. No more. But there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. Read it again. He that is not wise will not be taught. He that is not wise, right? You won't be taught, but read. But there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. He said there is a wisdom, though, which multiplies bitterness. Like, what is that wisdom that multiplies bitterness? Give me Sirach 39, 24. Sirach 39 and 24. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 24. Come on. As his ways are plain unto the holy, uh -huh. so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. Read it again. As his ways are plain unto the holy, Read. so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. So now they become, start to become stumbling blocks to us, right? As we come into the understanding of who we are, right? Keeping the commandments, it, uh, it, be it start to become plain unto us, right? But then that, that, that wisdom, read it again. 
This is the book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 24. As his ways are plain unto the holy, mm -hmm. so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. But those are stumbling blocks unto the wicked. Those that have the wisdom of this world, they become stumbling blocks unto the wicked, right? Brothers in the truth, we let the ways of this world start to overcome us. In the, in the, in the scriptures, we start to become a stumbling block. Now you're starting to question certain things, right? Why we got to do this? Or why we got to keep this? Because why? Because you want to go out there and chase this, and you want to go out there and, and follow the ways of this world, right? Read it again. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 24. Come on. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. They're stumbling blocks unto the wicked, right? Like I said, brothers come into this truth, right? And in and, and the world, they catch up with them. They, they want to go back and they want to catch up with old friends, right? You start, and it starts to become a stumbling block to you. The ways, those ways of your old friends start to rub back off on you again. It start to bring back memories. And now you want to dibble and dabble back into those old ways that you used to dabble in. Right? You might get a promotion on your job, right? Or you get you get caught up in Babylon and you stop applying the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Right? You stop studying. Right? This is that bitterness, right? When you stop studying, you can't hide it because when you hide it, you can't hide that a brother stop studying because brother stop forget certain precepts that he should know. Like John three sixteen. Uh brother stop stop coming on the Sabbath on a regular. Brother started to miss one day. Oh, I'm sick. All right. Okay, brother ain't here this Sabbath. All right, we, you know, you, we, okay, nobody really questioning that or whatever the case may be. One day start the one, one, one day out of the month turns into two days out of a month. All right, two days turn into three days out of a month. All right, something going on with the brother, right? Brother probably took the promotion on a job or whatever. Now he's got him working on the Sabbath. And that's pushing him further and further away from the truth. Brother started, uh, like I said, dibble and dabble back in the world with old friends. And it's that, those old friends that the ways start to grab them again. And now you, you start to dibble and dabble in those things. And you start to study less and you start to move away from this truth more, more, and more. Read it again. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 24. Come on. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. So are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. Brothers can start, brothers can see where you're going off. Hey, your countenance change. Your spirit start to change. You start to notice, hey, your brother, he ain't doing the same things that he was doing when he came through the door. Brother came, main brother come through. Brother was on the cleaning crew. Hey, brother was hey, making sure the, clue, the school was spotless, right? We knew that this brother was going to come in. He was going to take care of this thing. He was going to be spotless. Now you start to notice certain areas ain't spotless no more. Hey, you looking for the brother. Where the brother at? Hey, the brother's sick. Okay, he's sick this week. You're looking for him the next week. The brother's sick again. Or the brother just ain't showing up or whatever the case may be. Now you start, those are the little things that brothers are starting to uh, pull away from this truth. Starting to pull away, getting distracted by the world. All right, give me Proverbs. Proverbs 20 and 11. Proverbs chapter 20. And uh, let me get there. 20 and verse, start at verse 11. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 11. Even a child is known by his doing. He said, What? Even a child is known by his doing. So even a child is known by his doings, right? Because you're like a child. Right, you leave a child, you leave a child alone for too long, and you don't hear from them. What do you do? A lot of us, we go running in that room, we looking for the child, or whatever the case may be. Same thing with brothers. Right, read it again. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure, and whether it be right. Just like a child, even with brothers, like uh, uh, brothers, uh, read it again. Even a child is known by his doings. Just like a child is left alone, right? A child is known by his doing because we know, hey, that child, that child, he up to something, right? On him in the room playing. Something going on back there, so now we got to go and check on the brothers. Same thing with brothers. You don't hear from brothers, right? Brothers stop communicating like they used to communicate. Brothers stop coming to the Sabbath on a regular like they used to. Brothers ain't in count as they used to be, right? Now you're inquiring about the brother because, hey, just like a child, you know, they up to something, right? You, it, it, something, ain't, something ain't right. So now we got to go check on them. Read it again. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 11, even a child is known by his doing, Read. whether his work be pure and whether it be right. Whether his work be pure or whether his work be right. So if you ain't hearing from brothers and stuff like that on a use of God, the scriptures say, hey, we're supposed, to speak to, we're supposed to speak to one another often, right? We're supposed to communicate with one another often because I guarantee you brothers going to communicate with uh, Esau on their job, right? Brothers going to do that. Brothers going to do that faithfully. But brothers will stop doing that. Start to, the communication start to become slow. Like I said, the brother ain't, you don't see the brother around or the sister around no more. There's something going on. 
Just like children, we hey, just like you leave a child alone too long, hey, something ain't right. Something going on. So we got hey, we we checking up on it, trying to see what's going on. Right? Give me Proverbs. Proverbs change same book, chapter ten and verse sixteen. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10 and verse 16. Come on. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. Read it again. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. A lot of our brothers, hey, brothers like that, he forgot this, right? Read it again. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. The labor of the, the, labor of the righteous, we tend to things that's going to give us life, right? Dibbling and dabbling out there in that world, hey, it ain't, it ain't nothing but death out there, nothing but death and destruction. All those distractions out there in the world today is nothing but death. And let's look at how people today, look how destroyed our people is today, following the ways of this world. A lot of our people stuck in the midst of Christianity, and and and, and, and people that's in the Christian church, they the worst ones, right? They the worst ones up in these churches, committing the most wicked. They the most wicked, right? They 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 be out in the club on Saturdays. The sisters be out there twerking or whatever the case may be, and they're talking about they finna go serve the Lord on Sunday, right? No, you can't serve two. Now, you're going to either be in one or you're going to either be in the other. Right? That's what goes on in the world. Read it again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, and verse 16. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. So the labor of the righteous, they tend to life. Right? We tend to these things of the Lord. Right? We tend to these things, to the, uh, to the ways of the Lord, and walk after the footsteps of Christ. By going out there teaching our people the law, statutes, and commandments of God. By coming in here being a servant unto our people. Right, we tend to these things that's life because the word of God is what's going to give us life. Read it again. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. Read. The fruit of the wicked to sin. So the fruit of the wicked is sin, right? Because something going on there, brothers, is not tending to the things that he, he normally would tend to, right? Not, you know, brothers be disappearing and you don't see brothers for two, three weeks. Then brothers show up on the, uh, brothers, but brothers will show up on feast days, but brothers be here front and center ready to party. Right, but we don't see brothers when it's time to do the work. You know, something going on with that brother. You start to forget that thing. You start to forget that first love. You start to forget that. You start to lose that fire. That fire is starting to blow out, and you gotta catch yourself. All right, read that again. The book of Proverbs, chapter ten, and verse sixteen. Read. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. Read. The fruit of the wicked to sin. So we gotta get. You gotta get yourself and catch yourself and come back and labor to those things that tended unto life. Right? Because those things that's out here in the world that got us distracted, those things that we out there chasing in the world that got us distracted, is going gonna, is, is gonna to lead to a whole sea of wickedness, to a, to a life of sin. Right? Because you're going to break laws, statutes, and commandments chasing them things. Right? You come in here, you had a job where you was off on the Sabbath, but this job paying you more money. So now you go take this job because it paying you more money, but guess what? Now you got to work Sabbaths. Now you at work on all the feast days or whatever the case may be. Now you're not around the brothers or sisters. You're not around the sisters, right? Because you took you willingly when it took this job, and, and took, uh, you went and took this job, and now it's taking you away from those things, taking you away from that that first love, taking you away from that being able to go out there and go to camp and teach your people, right? Sisters being able to take care of the brothers when they come back from camp or whatever the case may be, right? You for, hey, we forget those things and we forget those labors. Read that again. The book of Proverbs of the ten and verse sixteen. The Read. labor. Of the righteous tendeth to life. Uh -huh. The fruit of the wicked to sin. The labors of the righteous, we gonna tend to life, right? We gonna hey, we it's nothing wrong with wanting to have a decent job or whatever the case may be. But we know those that want to tend to those things of life, hey, we know that hey, look, I'm not hey, I ain't trying to hey, I'm not trying to let nothing get in the way of what I'm trying to do for the Lord. As long as I got what I need to survive or whatever the case may be, hey, I'm good. Hey, the Lord said that He gonna provide for us. And what's that scripture in the Psalms? Psalms, what is it, 37? 37, I want to say 25 or 35. 25. Yeah, verse 25. 37 and 25. The book of Psalms, chapter 37 and verse 25. Read. I have been young, and now I am old. Uh, he said he have been young, and he been old. Read on. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. God said he ain't seen the righteous forsaken. So the righteous, those that's righteous, that seek it to the things that pertain unto life. God said that you are not going to be forsaken. Right? As long as you trust in him, he said you're not going to be forsaken. And what else? No, his seed begging bread. No, will you be begging bread because the Lord said he's going to take care of you. You're going to be all right. Right? The Lord going to provide those things that we need. Just do the work. Right? And go out there and teach your people. And sisters, continue to do the work and continue to take care of the prophets or whatever the case may be. And teach the children or whatever the case may be. Right? We got to remember to attend unto those things. 
right? Because hey, when we when we start to stray away from them things, these is this is these are some of the type of things that happen. Go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 and give me verse uh 43, I want to say. Start at 43. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 12, and verse 43. Uh -huh. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. So when that unclean spirit, right, is gone out of that man, right? It, it, it's gone. It's gone for a while, but right? Read on. He walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. So that unclean spirit, even though he walked, he left you, but now he walking through those dry places again, looking for those to seek that he looking for those uh where he can where he can take rest at again. Read. Then he saith, I will return. Into my house from whence I came out. He said, "What? I will return unto my house from whence I came out." That unclean spirit has returned because the brother or sister is is working on the Sabbath, right? He missing four and five Sabbaths a week. Now he ain't studying no more, right? That unclean spirit has returned, right? Those distractions, those things that uh, that we that we lust after, that we start to give uh, attention to. Right, like the brother gave attention to that, 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 that Edomite or whatever the case may be. He got distracted, and now the unclean spirit has returned. Read it again. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. He, he said he's going to return, right, into that same place in which he come out. Read. And when he has come, he find it empty. Why he find it empty? Because now you ain't meditating no more. Your eyes are not enlightened no more. You're not meditating on the law, statutes, and commandments of God. So now he find it empty. Read. Swept. And garnish. Now he found the empty, swept, and garnished, right? Because right, you ain't doing no studying no more, right? Now your mind is completely focused on whatever it is that you're doing that got you distracted out there in the world, right? Now you're an easy target. Now Satan can come in and just and, and just pick you off because now you're an easy target. You're not shielded with the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. Read. Then go of he and take up with himself seven other spirits. Now you're starting to become worse, right? Because now... That seven, those seven spirits that came upon you, right? You was a whoremonger, right? And that spirit left you, but now that spirit come back. Hey, now, hey, like scripture say, hey, all bread is sweet unto a whoremonger, right? Now you, you was a whoremonger dealing with women, and now, it may, and now you may cross over and start dealing with men, right? Because the scripture say, all bread is sweet unto a whoremonger. Those are like those seven other spirits that's coming along with it, all right? Until you be destroyed. Read. Then go of he and take up with himself. Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. More wicked than himself. Because this brother, hey, this brother dude had all the girls when he was back in the world or whatever the case may be. Right? He didn't got with his friends and they reminiscing on them times. And you start to dibble and dabble back in them things. And then you start to take on a spirit more wicked than you was before. Now you start to deal with men. Right? Or, or you done messed around and, and, and dealt with a, 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 what they call them, uh, uh, the, the, the tranny or whatever the case may be. Transvestite or whatever. Dudes that. The, uh, have the sex changes or whatever the case may be. You find out about it later on, and now you're cool with it, right? That's that taking on that spirit. That spirit now is getting worse. Now you're starting to deal with the Now it's cool. To, now you say it's cool to deal with dudes. At the end of the day, I don't care if you put on makeup, nails, you put a wig on, or whatever the case may be. The birth certificate say that you're a man. Hey, you're a man. You are a man. Ain't no doubt about it. You a man, and brothers, a hey, brothers that that can uh, that can that uh, you got these students out here in the world that deal with that and say that hey, I'm cool with it or whatever the case may be, and fall in love with that. That's like that old clean spirit bringing those seven more spirits worse than you was before. Read. And they entered in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse now than you, the first. Now you worse, man, because now you dealing with that. Now you dealing with hey, now you dealing with men, because like so like I said earlier, the scriptures say hey, all bread. It's sweet unto a whoremonger. All bread. Read. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Now you wicked, right? Because what 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 are those things? Give me what are those things? Uh Mark. Mark seven. Mark seven. Cause Satan knows those lusts. Right? And that's why a lot of brothers and sisters, we 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 hey, we dibble and dabble with them things. We we start to hey, we want to look back at the lifestyle that we used to have and start to dibble and dabble with those things. Cause these are the things that on our mind and these are the things that's what causes us a lot of us give in to these things and go back to dealing with these things read that it's the book of mark to the seven and verse 21 read for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts evil thoughts because first it starts with your thoughts right it starts in the mind of the man or the woman right these thoughts and then it becomes reality right read adultery adultery right 
Now you're starting to, to uh, commit adultery. Now you're doing it ten times worse because you took on seven other spirits, right? Now you're sleeping, yeah, you, you're sleeping with another man's wife, and then you turn around, you probably turn around and sleep with a husband as well, right? Now you're worse, read. Fornications. Fornications, right? These are these thoughts that we have, and these these thoughts that we battle with, read. Murders. Murdering spirits, read. Thefts. Thefts, read on. Covetousness. Uh-huh. Wickedness. Read. Deceit. Read. Lexiviousness. Come on. An evil eye. Read. Blasphemy. Read on. Pride. Read. Foolishness. Come on. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. All of these things that, that a lot of us that we battle with, because these are the things that we think of every day, believe it or not. A lot of brothers, a, 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 a brother, see, just like the brother we saw earlier, he saw his sister and immediately, right? Immediately the dude was ready, he, he, he was ready to tap in. Ready, ready, ready to go in. If the sister would have laid down, right, he would have been ready to go in and forgot that his whole wife was right there. Right? Those are these distractions that get us caught up. And we must filter out these things with the word of God. Right? That's the only thing that's going to keep us with a, with, a, with a sound mind. Right? Give me Sirach 13 and 1. Sirach chapter 13 and verse 1. Read that. It's the book of Sirach. Chapter 13 and verse 1. Come on. He that touches pitch shall be defiled therewith. So when you associate with yourself with these things, right, it starts to become you. You start to become those things when you associate yourself with these things, right? You got the promotion on your job, right? Now now uh, the coworkers, they want to go out for drinks after hours or whatever the case may be. Those drinks after hours start to turn into you going into the clubs and start, uh, uh, whatever the case may be. Now you're getting worse and you're getting worse and you get worse. Right? You should associate yourself with certain things, you, special things in the world. Don't associate with those things. A lot of us, we got to go out in the world. Of course, we got to work and we got to do our business or whatever the case may be. Go out there and do your business, hey, and lead the world. Let the world be the world. Right? Read it again. He that touches pitch shall be defiled therewith. Because when you touch it and you associate yourself with them things, you're going to be defiled with it also. Just a matter of time before it grabs holds of you. And before you know it, you're in the midst of all of that wickedness that's going on. Read. And he that have fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. He said, he that have fellowship with a proud man will be like unto him. Because why? It will start to show off in your actions. Right? You'll be like, hey, man, that brother start to act like this. Right? That sister starting to move like this. Why? Because you associate yourself with the wrong things and not keeping yourself grounded and rooted of beneath law, statutes, and commandments of God. Read it again. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 13 and verse 1. Come on. He that touches pitch shall be defiled their will. Uh -huh. And he that have fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. He said, you shall be like unto him. That fire on you that, that, once, that you once had is starting to blow out. Right? Because why? You associate with yourself with those things that you shouldn't associate yourself with. Right? Right? We, we, we got to come up out of that. You start to ask the brother or sisters, right? Everything that, every, everything, everything the good that the brother was doing is starting to wash away. Or the sister that she was doing is starting to wash away because now they want to associate themselves with them things that's going on in the world and start to give themselves a bad name. Right? That's how you know that, you know, sin is involved. Right? Because you don't see the brother or sister like you used to or you normally to on a regular. Because remember, Satan knows those lusts. Satan knows those things that we lust after, and he's going to put them things right in front of your face. Right? Give me that. Give me Sirach 18. It's 18 and 20. Or 30. Sirach 18 and 30. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 30. Read. Go not after thy lust. He said what? Go not after thy lust. He said go not after thy lust. Right? Don't go after those things. Right? right? Refill to these things out with the Bible. Hey, call brothers and sisters, like the scriptures say. Keep that communication open and calling brothers and sisters so you can filter out to those things where you get that urge to want to go fulfill that lust. Read, read it again. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 30. Read. Go not after thy lust, uh -huh. but refrain thyself from thine appetite. Refrain yourself from those appetites. And like I said, Satan knows the type of appetite that a lot of us have, right? Satan knows if you like the uh, the light-skinned woman or the dark-skinned woman. Satan knows if you like the, the, the well-built shaped woman or the big woman. Satan knows those things. Same things with the sisters. Oh, she like dark men or dark brothers or light-skinned brothers, muscular brothers, or just a, a normal built brother. Satan knows those things. And Satan going to put them things right in front of you, right? Satan knows that you love money, right? Satan knows, hey, what's the, what's the saying that be going around? Hey, I slapped my mama for a million dollars, 
right? Satan will put that money right in front of you and because he, he knows that you'll do it, right? And so we got to filter out these things with the word of God, right? We got to filter out those things. Give me Sirach 32. Sirach 32 and 17. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved. Say what? A sinful man will not be reproved. A sinful man won't be reproved. Right? That's how you know. Like, brother's going off. Brother's starting to make excuses as to why he ain't at the Sabbath. Right? Brother's starting to make excuses why they not uh, uh, at camp. Right? Brothers and sisters starting to make excuses of why they, uh, they can't, can't perform their duties in their office or whatever the case may be. Because, read it again. A sinful man will not re be reproved, but find an excuse according to his will. So now he finding an excuse according to his will, according to his will to fit his narrative. Right? So he make excuses as to why he or she got to work on the Sabbath, right? They make excuses as why the brothers, why he can't be at camp or whatever the case may be, right? Sisters make excuses why she can't show up and perform her duties that's in the kitchen. Brothers and sisters make excuses why we can't keep the school clean like they once used to. Why? Because they entertained that lust and they became distracted by those things that they was lusting after, right? Those things are starting to overcome them. Read it again. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. Uh -huh. A man of counsel will be considered. That's it. That's it. That's it. A sinful man, right? You can't be reproved. That's how you know sin is going on, right? That's how you know when brothers start to make excuses. Because excuses is what? Excuses is ain't nothing but just like reasons, right? Reasons just filled with a bunch of lies, right? Brother going to tell one lie. Tell another lie, then another lie, and another lie until he's going to get caught up in his lies. Right? That's all an excuse is. Right? Is this better to just accept it? Hey, bro, yeah, I messed up. I messed up. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do right, and I'm going to get it together. And just stop making the excuses and get it right. Because, you know, like I said, a sinful man, according to his will, according to his own will, he, don't, he, he may not see what you see because he's so far gone. He or she's so far gone, they're going off into the abyss. Right? Satan, Satan got his arms wrapped around them. Now they're comfortable out there in that world, right? They're comfortable in the midst of that wickedness. I mean, brother, let me tell you something. You got to be crazy some more. You know, you learn this truth, right? And, and you, you go out there and you, you start to do certain things that's unholy. It's, you start to do things on the Sabbath or whatever the case may be, right? You out there, you went back to, now you, now you cooking or something like that on the Sabbath or whatever the case may be. Man, that's you got to be crazy, right? Those are like easy things to follow. But those things that understand it start to get clouded because you was distracted by whatever the case may be. All right? Give me Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. And uh, start at verse 24. 23. 20, where are you 20? It don't matter. Hey, let me hear it. 2 and 20, what I say? Read verse 24. It's the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 24. Read. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil uh -huh. came death into the world. Through envy of the devil came death unto the world. Read. And they that do hold of his side do find it. They that do take hold of his side, they that get comfortable in the midst of that sin, they that, that who Satan started to wrap his arms around you and get you comfortable. Read it again. And, and nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. And they that do hold of his side do find you, it. You starting to take hold of those things in the world, you do find it. I mean, yeah, you can call, you, hey, you call in death unto yourself because you're out there in the midst of sin, out there in the midst of wickedness, right? You forgot that labor, the, you forgot that labor, or what the scripture said in Proverbs, labor of righteousness in the truth, or whatever the case may be, right? Read, uh, go to Wisdom of Solomon 116. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 16. Read. But ungodly men. But ungodly men, because now you're starting to become ungodly, right? You're starting to go out there and you do these ungodly things, right? Read. With their works and words, call it to them. You call these things unto you. You call in death unto you. Because the wages of sin is death, right? A lot of brothers and sisters know that. But a lot of brothers and sisters, they get distracted, all right? And we start to cause these things and we start to call death upon us. Read again. But ungodly men. With their works and words called it to them. Read. For when they thought to have it their friend. When they thought to have it their friend. Read on. They consumed tonight. Read. And made a covenant with it. 
because they are worthy to take part with it. Don't be, don't make yourself worthy to take part in those things that uh, in, in that wickedness that's going on out in the world. Because the Lord said, "I'm gonna destroy all of that." Right? Don't make yourself worthy to take part in those things. Give me Job four and eight. Book of Job, chapter four, verse eight. In the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 8. Read. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity, and so wickedness reap the same. Read again. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity, and so wickedness reap the same. You continue in the midst of that wickedness, God said that you're going to reap the same. Right? You're going to reap the same. That's why a lot of brothers and sisters be complaining and all that, the ones that don't you don't see up on the Sabbath, and then when they come, they complain it. Right, because they don't understand why they're going through these things that they're going through. Because now that candle is blowing out. Because why read it again? Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity. Now you're going out there, you start you you plowing iniquity, you dibbling and dabbling with the midst of sin, right? Now your thoughts are starting to become reality. Read. And so wickedness. Reap the same. You sow that wickedness, God said that you're gonna reap the same, right? You're gonna start to go through these certain things because you want to turn aside and go back out to the world and dibble and dabble with those other things. You forgot your first love, right? Give me Lamentations 3. Lamentations 3 and 39, right? What are some of the reasons and purpose do a man complain? Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 39. Read it when you get it. It's the book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 39. Come on. Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins. Read it again. Wherefore doth a, a living man complain? So wherefore do we complain, right? Read. A man for the punishment of his sins. A man a punishment for his sins, right? This is why a lot of people be complaining a lot of times, right? Because hey, a lot of like, brothers just be going off. Like you don't see them no more. And then they come back and they still complaining because you out there, you're dibbling and dabbling in sin. That's what that's why a man complained, read. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Examine yourself, right? Examine yourself. Examine where you went wrong, right? And fix it and turn yourself back to the ways of the Lord. Catch yourself and come back and do the work. Right? Come back. Read it again. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. We got to examine ourselves. And it's right there in the scriptures when you read in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Right? We got to live by that. We got to examine ourselves and examine ourselves daily. Because a lot of us get distracted a lot of times. But it's just a matter of time for somebody. You get distracted and you get distracted by the right thing and you start to fall off. Right? We got to examine ourselves and catch ourselves. Right? Give me Sirach 428. Sirach chapter 4 and verse 28. It's the book of Sirach chapter 4 and verse 28. Strive for the truth. Until death. Read it again. Strive for the truth until death. The Bible says strive for truth unto death. Right? We got hey, we gotta strive for this thing until the day that we die. Right? Because it ain't nothing out there in the world. Why do why go out there in the world and, and go out there and do all the midst of this wickedness and then die and be burned up when you can come in here and strive for this truth, get back to doing the work and keep the law, statutes, and commandments and get the kingdom of heaven. Because when we die, we don't die. Because if the righteous die, the righteous go be in the, in paradise with Christ, right? We gotta read that again. The book of Sirach, chapter four, verse twenty-eight. Come on, strive for the truth unto death. The Bible says, "Strive unto for the truth unto death." Is there anything else? And the Lord shall fight for thee. And the Lord said, "The Lord said, I'm gonna fight for you, right? I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be that shield of protection for you, right? I'm gonna fight for you for these things that you uh, that we need, or whatever the case may be, right? We got to strive for this truth unto death." Right, give me Micah. Give me Micah 4 and 10. The book of Micah, chapter 4, verse 2. Read it when you get it. It's the book of Micah, chapter 4, and verse 10. Come on. Be in pain and what? labor. He said what? Be in pain and labor. What's the scripture say? Be in pain and labor. The Bible says be in pain and in labor, right? Nobody said that it was going to be easy, right? We're going we gonna to go through some, some trials and some tribulations. We're going to go through some things or whatever the case may be. But read it again. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Even though we're going through it, he says still labor, still continue to labor to bring forth. Read. Oh, daughter of Zion, uh -huh. like a woman in travail. Read. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. 
There the Lord shall redeem thee God from the said, hand of thine enemies. He said, be in pain to be delivered, right? We're going to go through these things, right? But we must continue to labor to bring forth the kingdom of heaven. We must. We must not give up. We must keep pushing. We must find, we must continue to find these things and be rooted in something, right, to keep us coming, to keep those distractions out. Because the distractions, they're going to be there. But are you going to let those distractions overcome you and become you, right? Because we got to strive unto the truth unto death the same way Paul did, right? Give me, um, give me 2 Timothy 4. Book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. Start at verse um, 5. In the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 5. Come on. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Read it again. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. He said, endure those afflictions, right? Be in pain, right? Read. Do the work of an evangelist. But still go do the work, right? We still got to do the work because it got to be done. We got to bring forth this kingdom because our people need it, right? Read. Make full proof of thy ministry. Go out here and make full proof of your ministry. Read. For I am now ready to be offered. What Paul said? For now I am ready to be offered. Paul said, I'm ready to die, right? I'm ready because now they're about to put Paul to death. So Paul said, now I'm ready, right? Read. And the time of my departure is at hand. Now the time of his departure is at hand. Paul was putting in this work until the day that he died, right? The same way that we got to be. Read. I have fought a good fight. He said, what? I have fought a good fight. He said, I fought a good fight, right? He didn't give up. He kept fighting and he kept pushing and pushing the word of God. Even when I, hey, Paul, because what is, what's that? Hold this real quick. Give me, give me uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 11 and 26. Paul went through some stuff. Start at verse uh, 24. The book Start of 2nd, 23, my bad. It's the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 23. 22. 22. Come on. Are they Hebrews? So am I. He says, so am I. Read. Are they Israelites? So am I. Read. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Come on. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. He said, I speak as a fool. Read. I am more. I am more. Read. In labors, more abundant. He said, what? In labors, more abundant. Paul said, I'm in labors, more abundant, right? I'm, I'm laboring. Read. In stripes, above measure. Come on. In prisons, more frequent. He was in prisons, more frequent, right? Read. In depths of. He was in the depth of. People were threatening his life, or whatever the case may be, right? He was even a stone to death, too, right? Read. Of the Jews, five times received I, forty stripes, save one. Come on. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Thrice was I beaten with rods. So this is that pain that he was going through, but still, Paul was still out there doing the work. Read. Once I was stoned. Come on. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. He suffered shipwreck, right? Read. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Man, could you imagine that? Being a night and a day out in the deep, in the middle of the ocean, right? You shipwreck and you out there in the deep. You don't know what's out there, right? I can remember going on a cruise ship, and, and um, we was out there on the, on the ocean at night, and all you see is just pitch black dark. Like, hey, I was, I was get to the point, I didn't want to look over the balcony no more. Right, but read on. In journey up, uh -huh. in perils of waters. In perils of waters, read. In perils of robbers. Come on. In perils of my, uh, my own country. Even his own people, right, read. In perils by the heathen. Read on. In perils in the city. Read. In perils in the wilderness. Come on. In perils in the sea. Read. In perils amongst false Read. brethren. Read on. In weariness. In and what? In weariness. Read. And painfulness. In painfulness, right? And through all these things and this painfulness, Paul still was out there doing the work. Read. In watching often. Uh huh. In hunger and thirst. In fasting often. Uh huh. In cold and nakedness. So Paul went through some things, but Paul still kept his truth. He strived for this truth. He strived for it unto death. Go back to that uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. It's the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. I have fought a good fight. Read. I have finished my course. So he finished his course. Paul didn't give up. Right? Read. I have kept the faith. And Paul kept the faith. He stood strong. Read. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. So he knew that, right? He knew that I, that I stayed a course. Right? I don't quit. Right? I remember that first love, right? I know that there's a crown of what? Of righteousness. A crown of righteousness waiting for me. Right? Read. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. That we all want that crown, right? We all want that crown. And we all want to, we want to hear those words, job well done. Right? Read. And not to me only, but unto them that also love his appearing. Come on. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Read. For the Damascus have forsaken me. Who have forsaken him? Damascus. Have forsaken me. Read. Having loved this present world. So you see some brothers, hey, they, they forsook it. Some of them couldn't catch themselves, and he loved this present world. Read. 
and is departed unto Thessalonica. And he went back unto Thessalonica. He went back into the world. He followed after his lust, right? Some brothers and sisters going to do that. He forgot his first love, right? Read. Christians to Galatia. He said who? Christians to Galatia. Read. Titus unto Demetia. Titus unto Demetia. These brothers went back into the world following after their lust. Right? They got distracted by whatever it is that they got distracted back by and went back out there following after those things and said, hey, forget that. I'm going back over to this because I missed that. Right? Read. Only Luke is with me. Only who? Only Luke is with me. So sometimes you might have 50, you might have 30, 40 men around you, but it might go, but you're going to end up probably with the only that one or that two that's going to stand stiffly and strong for the Lord with you. Right? Read. Take Mark and bring him with thee. For he is profitable to me he for is, the ministry. Right? He is profitable unto me and to men. So we got to strive unto death, right? And we got to remember our first love. We got we to gotta remember these things and catch ourselves. Because just like Paul, Paul went through these things, but Paul kept the course. Paul stayed the course, and Paul didn't give up. Paul kept the fight going, right? Paul strived for it until, the, until, the, until his time he was going to be taken up. Paul said, I'm ready, right? Hey, I'm ready. I did what I was supposed to do. I fought a good fight. Now I'm ready. Right? I know that this crown of righteousness is laid up for me. I'm good. You understand what I'm saying? He said, I'm good. Right? Give me um give me uh give me Revelations two and four. Two and four. Read one more and then I'm gonna shut it down. Revelation chapter two and verse four. It's the book of Revelation, chapter two and verse four. Read. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Read it again. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love. Right? You have left your first love, right? But you left your first love because of a job or because of whatever lust that is that you followed out there in the world, right? Christ said, I got something against you for that, right? Read. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Remember where you have fallen, right? Catch yourself, right? Catch yourself while you got time and so you don't get caught like that thief in the night. Read. And repent and do the first work. He said, repent. He said, repent and do the first work. Do the first work. Come back to your and, to, uh, and do the first work because this is our job. This is our profession, right? All this is other stuff that we're doing, these little nine to fives and stuff like that that we got. Hey, this just another, that was just a, that's just another way for us to survive in this captivity, right? But this is our one true job. Just like you read about Paul. Paul was a tent maker, right? But Paul still traveled throughout the uh, countries of Galatia and all that and still was doing the work, right? Teaching, teaching the gospel to the brethren. Read. Or else I will come unto thee quickly. He said what? Or else I will come unto thee quickly. Right, he said going to come unto you quickly like that thief in the night. Read. And we'll, and we'll remove thy candlestick. He said what? And we'll remove thy candlestick. He said he will remove that candlestick. Remove your understanding. Right? Now, brothers, saying that Deuteronomy uh, 28 is not what it means no more. That didn't happen. Right? Now, brothers, uh, uh, start to say that I don't have to keep the Sabbath day no more. Right? You don't you don't believe in these things no more. Now you think that you can eat pork. Oh well, you know, it ain't nothing, it ain't no harm in eating pork, right? God he said he'm gonna remove that understanding. Those simple things that you understood. He said, I'm gonna remove those things, right? Read. And we'll remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Except you repent, except you catch yourself, right? And come back to your first love and do the first work. All right? We got to do the first word. We got to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments and do the first word because Satan got so many distractions out there, so many ways to keep our people entrapped in the midst of the sin, and we got to keep our minds and we got to study and meditate upon the statutes, laws, statutes, and commandments of God. Give me, give me Sirach. Give me Sirach 31 and 1. 39 and 1. I think that's it. Is it 39 and 1? Yeah. Read that. It's the book of Sirach, to the 39 and verse 1. Read. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High, Read. and is occupied in the meditation thereof, uh -huh. will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients, uh -huh. and be occupied in prophecy. He that giveth his mind, right, unto the laws of the Most High, right, this will keep you occupied, right? You won't be occupied in these other things that's going on out here in the world, in the world right? Read it again. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High, and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients, and be occupied in prophecy. When you occupy yourself in these prophecies, right, you 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 building that you building more wisdom, right? You are gaining more wisdom, so you don't have time to be occupied in nothing else. That's why we must meditate upon the laws, statutes, and commandments of God, right? When you start to fall, and you start to catch yourself, because like the bishop will go over a lot with battle fatigue and whatever the case may be. A lot of brothers and sisters get that battle fatigue, and then we start to uh, fall fall off or whatever the case may be.
Hey, remember your first love. Hey, do the first work. Hey, don't give up. Hey, stay in the fight. Hey, with that, y'all, hey, that's it. Hey, Lord's will, y'all got something from it. Hey, but that's it. Shalom, Mosai, and Christ bless. I'm a certified guy. Chit the tag on me. Keep a sword and a dagger in the bag, homie. Sipping water from the tap. Watch a splash on me. I've been working for a change like it's cash only. I'm a certified guy. Check the tag on me. Keep a sword and a dagger in the bag, homie. Sipping water. On the tap, watch a splash on me. I've been working for a change like it's cash only. Put your hands down, they too short to box. I'm a real Jew, something that you not. Why they hating on us? Always trying to plot. Wipe his face clean, like a swivel mop. We on every block, line up on line, but this ain't Adidas. Heritage hot like a fever, choking on milk, that boy's a fetus. Lying in front of the people, he got a block, send him to the cleanest. Thinking he's smart like a genius, chasing his dreams, we gon' leave him dreamless. Script, cold, ice, out. Truth, hits, lights, out. All them haters faking, straight clowns. Real guys, coming out. I'm a certified guy, check the tag on me. Keep a sword and a dagger in the bag, homie. Sipping water from the tap, watch a splash on me. I've been working for a change like it's cash uh, only. I-U-I-C, kicking flavor in your ear. Crowd, stop it still. We'll...